Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. We are discussing Proverbs 31 woman, Proverbs 31 man, and the qualities, some of the traits that um, these individuals have. So we're going to pick up reading, continuing, in Proverbs 31, we've already discussed uh, chapter 10. If you haven't seen those videos, go check them out. I've done two videos on Proverbs 31 and verse 10 already. And now we're going to begin with Proverbs 31 verses 11 and 12. Proverbs 31, 11 and 12, look what it says. It says, the heart of her husband doth safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil. If you remember back in uh, the Bible times um, when they had war, um, if you gain the victory in the war, then you gain the spoil, you gain the treasure, you gain the, uh, the loot, as it were. But it says, the heart of her husband doth safely trust in her, so that he shall have no need of spoil. He has full trust in his wife. He has full trust in her because of her commitment to God, her relationship with God. And that doesn't necessarily even have to do with finances. Yes, in this case, it's speaking of finances that she won't spend uh, all her money, that she won't spend all his money, but she economizes. In every decision that she makes, he fully trusts it because she is virtuous, because she is right with the Lord. And this is why he is able to fully trust in her. This is coming from Adventist home and it speaks on um, this idea of her being trusted and, and her being an economist when it comes to the finances regarding the spending of money. And so this is Adventist home 46 paragraph three. It says, it gives the, the question because these are the traits um, in the section of Adventist home, these are the traits that you would want to find in a woman to qualify her to be able to marry her. It says, ask the question, is she an economist or will she, if married, not only use all of her earnings, but all of yours to gratify a vanity, a love of appearance? So it's basically saying that if she has these traits, do not marry her. Because then he would not safely trust in her. He safely trusts in her because she makes the right decisions because they are based upon God's principles and what he desires for her, her life. Let's look at a few texts that show the safely trust in her. Can God safely trust in us or is it the opposite? Let's look. Job chapter 1 and verse 1. We know the story of Job, but let's just read this. It says, There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. And then it says, And that man he was perfect and upright and one that feared God and eschewed evil, hated evil, perfect, upright, feared God because he eschewed evil. He shunned evil. But in Proverbs 31 and verse 11 and 12, as we go back, it says the heart of her husband doth safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil. Then it says she will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. So this gives more principles of a virtuous woman. She is a perfect woman. She is an upright woman. One that feared God. How was Job able to be perfect? How was Job able to be upright? How was Job able to be one that feared God and eschew evil, shun evil? It is because Christ was living in his heart. So Christ, the husband, can fully 
safely trust in Job. And this is why Job chapter one and verse eight says, and the Lord said unto Satan, hast thou considered my servant Job? And there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil. So God was saying to Satan that, have you considered Job? Go ahead. You can tempt him. Don't kill him. But you can tempt him because God had safely put his trust in Job because he knew that Job had accepted him fully. He knew that Job was upright. He knew that Job shunned evil. He knew that Job would do him good and not evil all the days of his life. He knew that Job was faithful to him in all that he had done. And so God is able to put his trust in us. He trusts us to go forward. But oftentimes we break that trust when we're not faithful to him. We break that trust when he says to go out into all the world teaching and preaching the gospel. But when we are not involved in that, where we're not involved in ministry, we're out of harmony with God and we're breaking the trust that he so wants to give us. He wants to trust us. If we trusted in him, we would love him. If we trusted in him, we would obey him. Let's read signs, the signs of the times, October 27, uh, 1881. Paragraph one, it says, the reign of judges in Israel closes with Samuel, than whom few purer or more illustrious characters are presented in the sacred record. There are few also whose life history contains lessons of greater value to the thoughtful student. So it's important for us to look in the life of Samuel because his life history contains lessons of greater value to the thoughtful student. It says the father of Samuel was Elkanah, a Levite who dwelt at Ramah in Mount Ephraim. He was a person of wealth and influence, a kind husband and a man who feared and reverenced God. There it goes. Wasn't that the traits of Job? This is the same traits of the virtuous woman. But look what it says about the wife, the wife of Elkanah, Samuel's mother. It says, Hannah, the wife of Elkanah was a woman of piety and devotion, humility, conscientiousness and a firm reliance upon God were ruling traits in her character. Of Hannah, it might truly be said in the words of the wise man, the heart of her husband doth safely trust in her. Did you hear that? This is the virtuous woman, Hannah. Another great example, as we have already discussed, Ruth. But it says, Hannah, she was full of piety and devotion. She was solemn and she spent time in God's word. Are you having devotions in your life? If you meet somebody and they don't have personal devotions, if they don't establish even family devotions, once you're together, they are not the one for you. Then it says that she was, she had humility. Is the person that you are seeking after have humility? Are they conscientious? Do they make rash decisions? Do they spend all your money? Do they spend all their money? Can you fully and safely trust in them? Then it also says, and Hannah, she had a firm reliance upon God. Isn't that the eight laws of health? Isn't that one of them? 
We say trust in God. She trusted in God. She takes hold of the eight laws of health. Are you finding a virtuous woman that takes hold of our health message, the eight laws of health? These must be the ruling traits of her character in order to marry her. And if you're a woman seeking a man, does he have these ruling traits of character, reliance upon God, humility, piety, devotion, conscientiousness? This is coming from Letters and Manuscripts, volume 25, um, manuscript 27, 1910, paragraph four. That was a mouthful, but it says, those who have received the light of truth are to speak the truth and pray the truth and live the truth. Is that you, friends? Is that the, the person that you are seeking after to engage into a relationship for life? Do they, do they speak the truth? Do they pray the truth? And most importantly, do they live the truth? These are the three areas that they have to take hold of the truth. The truth is Christ. Christ says that he is the way, the truth, and the life. John 14, 6. They are not to depart from the word of God as some are doing in order to follow their own devisings. The word that the Lord has given is spirit and life and works for the saving of souls. Then it says it is the only word in which we may safely trust. This is why the husband is able to safely trust in his wife is because she lives off the principles of the word of God. It says it is only the word in which we may safely trust. It is only in Jesus Christ that we may safely trust. And this is why the husband is able to safely trust in his wife is because she lives by the principles of the word of God. She is in evangelism. She is pious. She is a woman of devotion. She has all these wonderful traits about her and she is virtuous in all that she does. Jeremiah chapter 13 and verse 23 tells us that, can the Ethiopian change the skin or the leopard his spots? Then may he also do good that are accustomed to do evil. Didn't that say that in Proverbs 31 and verse 12? She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. How can she do it when the Ethiopian cannot change his skin? The leopard cannot change his spots. The zebra cannot change its stripes. So how can we that are accustomed to doing evil do good? It's impossible for us. But with Christ, it is possible. So the fact that she is able to do him good and not evil all the days of her life is because she has Christ within her life. She has that wisdom, Christ for us in her life. Then it says in Jeremiah 4.22, For my people is foolish. They have not known me. They are sottish children and they have none understanding. They are wise to do evil. This time they're wise to do evil instead of just wise. They are wise to do evil, but to do good, they have no knowledge. They are wise to do evil, but they have no knowledge of doing good. So how can we gain that knowledge? It started off as if for if they had known me, if we know Christ, then we are wise to salvation and not wise to do evil. Then we may do good and have an understanding of it. So how do we know God to be able to gain the knowledge of doing good all of the days of our life? First John chapter four and verse seven and eight. It is actually a scripture song and it says, Beloved, let us love one another for love is of God and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. God is love, beloved. 
Let us love one another, 1 John 4, 7 and 8. So I'll read it again. It says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God. And then it says, And knoweth God. He that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. Back in Jeremiah 4, 22, But to do good they have no knowledge. He that loveth not, knoweth not not God. So not only do they not know how to do good, but they don't know how to love because God is not resonating in their hearts. God is love. And if you know God, you would love him. If you know God, you will be born again. As it says, everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. So in order to have a knowledge of God, you must be born again. You must change your ways by God's grace. He's going to give you strength and the power to do so. We cannot do it on our own because can the leper change its spots? Can the Ethiopian change its skin? The same with us, friends. We need Christ Jesus within our life. And the virtuous woman, the virtuous man, has Jesus living in their hearts. And this is the person that you ought to marry. Last quotation here, the Review and Herald, June 30, uh, 1910, paragraph 10. It says, to know God is, in the scriptural sense of the term, to be one with him in heart and mind. To know God is to be one with him in heart and mind. Having an experimental knowledge of him, holding reverential communion with him as redeemer. Only through sincere obedience can this communion be obtained. Only through sincere obedience can this communion to be one with God be obtained. This is the life of a virtuous woman. The virtuous woman where her husband can safely trust in her because she is fully committed to God. God resonates in her heart. She is full of piety and devotion and all these wonderful traits. She is born again Christian. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. Do you want that for a significant other, friends? Do you want that for your own life? I pray that you may be able to have that devotion life, that you may be able to be truly born again and be one with the Father to truly know Him. May God help us as we seek to draw closer to God each and every day. I hope that you are truly blessed. And if you are truly blessed, share this blessing with others. Have a wonderful rest of your Sabbath. God bless.